this is going to be Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Roberts, Superintendent of Zion Elementary District 6. And I'm here at the Zion Fire Department to talk to you about fire prevention. Oh my god, baby, this is so fun! Let's go for a ride along! I'm Dr. Healy Roberts, Superintendent of Zion District 6, and we are here to celebrate Fire Prevention Week, and we would like to talk to you all a little bit about how you can learn about fire safety. Hi, my name is Firefighter Sarah. I am here to help uh, the superintendent teach you a little bit about fire safety for Fire Prevention Week, and we're going to start off with putting our gear on. So firefighters have to wear special clothes when we go in fire it could because it helps us uh, protect ourselves from heat and smoke now with that we want to show you how we put it on and she's gonna help us okay I'm ready Great. so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put our boots and our pants on now luckily we make it kind of easy for us because our boots are already inside of our pants so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the boots on I should have asked you what size you wear. That might have been helpful at the beginning. Nine. Oh my god. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Eight and a half. Nice. All right. Okay. So Ooh, now you have nice. your boots on. Now you are you ready to go into the fire yet? I do not think so. Fire, fire, okay. Sarah. I don't think so either. All right. Let's put your pants on. Oh, perfect. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Please do not be concerned. Okay. Um, yes, yes, I think so. Okay, so there's Velcro here. Okay. And then you're going to kind of attach this little belt here. You can cinch it up as tight as you want so they don't um, fall That off. is tight enough. Thank okay. you. All right. Are you ready to go into the fire yet? I do not think so. No. No. Okay, so the next thing I want you to put on is called a hood. And it's kind of just like a hood that you would put on if it's winter outside and it's really cold. This does not protect, protect us from the cold. This protect us, protects us from the heat. And it's made from a special material called Nomex, or Kev Kevlar, right? Okay, here we go. All right. Very good. So your hood is on, but you don't want it on all the way. You want to pull it back because you still have to put your mask on. So pull this all the way back. Like, can I move? All right, so now you have your hood on. So, just like the winter, like I said, you use your coat to protect you from the, the, the cold, and now we're going to use this to protect us from the heat. All right. Oh, this is heavy. It's a little heavy, yeah. Yes. All right. So I'm going to zip it up. I do not know how you do this by yourself. <laughs> this is a lot of work. You have to do it super fast, too. Ready yet? I feel weighted down, but probably not ready. Probably Firefighter Sarah. Not ready. Oh, okay. yes. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is a mask around your neck. And, so, a lot of people think this is an oxygen tank. It's not, it's an air tank. So, the air that we're breathing right now is compressed to fit into here because we need air to breathe when we go into a fire we can't breathe smoke because it's going to hurt us so we need clean air to breathe when we go into the fire now how much how long would this last if i was in a fire um this is a 30 minute battle but uh it depends on how hard you're working and how fast you're breathing how hard you're breathing so if your cardio is pretty good it's going to last a while, hopefully. Um, if it's not very good, 
it's not going to last very long. So it, it just depends. You know how big the cardio is. How much you're working and, and how, how fast and hard you're breathing. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is kind of heavy now. Okay. Right. It's, so we're going to put it on like a backpack. Okay. So get ready for school in the morning. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Feel. It feels very heavy. <laughs> okay. So we're going to. Oh my goodness, this is so heavy. How heavy is this? I'm not sure exactly how much the air pressure wow. weighs, but with everything, I think all of the gear weighs oh about gosh. 50 pounds. So heavy. <laughs> but you're doing a good job. Thank you. So I'm going to cinch all the straps. All right, how does it feel? I feel super like a firefighter. Okay, good. Yes. Right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our mask on. All right. Okay. Okay. Ready. So what you're going to do is you're kind of, I'm going to pull this over for you. Okay. So our mask helps us breathe the air that's on her back. We're going to attach it in here and we'll show you in a second, but she has to put her mask on. So. You're going to put, put your face in here and then pull this over your head. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to pinch the strap. Okay. Is that okay? Perfect. All right. Now we're going to go back to the hood. Because when we go into the fire, we don't want any um, any skin exposed at all. We're gonna we want to be completely encapsulated in the suit. So the next step is the hood that we put on earlier. I want to make sure. There we go. I want to make sure I have no skin from her cheeks or face exposed. Looks good. Now we're going to put your helmet on. So your helmet protects your head, obviously. If anything falls from the ceiling or you bump into anything while you're crawling, your helmet's going to protect your head. How does that feel? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to clip it so it doesn't fall off. Are you ready yet? Maybe. Oh, if I give you my ring. <laughs> what about your hands? Let me see your hands. No, no, no. no, no. no. All right. So the gloves are over here. So just put your hand in here. Okay. You can bring them up. Much better. <laughs> So it's kind of heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. You're strong, though. You can do that. Thank you. So you have to do the stairs. Very good. Yeah. Hold it on yourself. Alright. So. Okay. Are you ready to go into a fire gas? Maybe? Are you breathing? What air are you breathing right now? Oh no, I'm breathing. Yeah, so we have to turn your bottle on, right? Yes. So I'm gonna turn it on. Oh. Hey, hey. Okay. And here's your regulator. Oh. So it's kind of like a like a scuba. Ready? Take the breath. <laughs> So now she's breathing air from inside <laughs> and she sounds like Darth Vader. Now, she probably looks a little scary if you didn't know that was her under there. But we all know it's her under there. She's just wearing all of this stuff. <laughs> and now she's protected from the fire. She can go in there. She can breathe clean air. She's going to be protected from the heat. And that thing that keeps going off is called our pass device alarm. And it goes off when you don't move for about 30 seconds. Hmm. So if you move, it won't go off. But if we, if we go down in a fire 
and they can't find us or something and we're passed out and not moving, this thing's going to go off. We can also turn it on ourselves and it's really loud once it starts going, but that little beep lets us know like, hey, you're not moving, what's going on? So you give it a little shake and then it stops. Very nice. Awesome. Hi everybody, it's Firefighter Sarah. I'm here to um, kind of teach you guys a little bit about fire safety for Fire Safety Week uh, this October. Um, to help me with that, I have a special guest, my friend Sparky. Sparky, come on over. Hey Sparky, how you doing? Good. All right. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is 911. So 911 is the number that we dial when we have an emergency. So if we need an ambulance or somebody in our house needs an ambulance, we call 911. Right, Sparky? All right. So we also call 911 if there's a fire or we need the fire department uh, to put out a fire. And we also call 911 if we need police at our house. Um, do we call 911 if we need help with our math homework? No, no. Uh, do we call 911 if we want to see what the fire department's doing today? No. Do we call 911 if we have a little tummy ache? No. How about if somebody is passed out on the ground and we can't wake them up? Yeah. How about if the stove is on fire? Yes. How about if there is a bad guy trying to get into our house? Yes, we do call 911 for that, very good. Um, so the next thing I wanna talk about is if our clothes catch on fire, we wanna stop, drop, and roll. Um, Sparky is gonna help us stop, drop, and roll. Go ahead, Sparky. So Sparky's gonna get down on the ground, get low, he doesn't wanna run because if he runs, the flames are gonna get bigger on his clothes. So what he wants to do is he wants to stop, drop to the ground, cover his face, and roll around. Good job, Sparky. Very good. Now the next thing that Sparky's gonna help us out with is if there is a fire in your house and you need to get out, um, instead of walking, you want to stay low and crawl because the smoke, if there's smoke in your house and there's a lot of it, you don't wanna breathe that in because it's bad for your lungs and it can make you really sick. So what you want to do is you want to crawl as low as you can because the cleanest air is going to be down low. So Sparky, why don't you help us see what that looks like? Very good. Sparky's very low. Nice job, Sparky. Thanks for your help. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is kitchen safety. So how can we serve up fire safety in the kitchen? Well. The main thing is that we want to let our parents cook or our older adults. Do, if, if you're a, a kid that's younger, do you want to cook? Do you want to use fire? Not unless your mom or dad or aunt or uncle or grandma or grandpa are helping you or any other adult. But we do not want you cooking by yourself. We don't want you turning on the stove by yourself. So anything that looks like this and goes on a stove, we don't want you messing with. And that goes for the oven too. We don't want you messing with that either. Stay away from hot things. So I want you to remember that. Stay away from hot things in the kitchen. Um, now, Sparky's gonna help us with our next thing that we wanna talk about. We're gonna talk about toys and what we can and cannot play with. So we're gonna ask Sparky if we can play with whatever I'm bringing out. And he's gonna tell me yes or no. So the first thing, let's see here, what do I have? Is this a toy that we can play with? Yes. Is this a toy that we can play with? Yes. Um, this is lighter fluid. No, we can't play with this. How about a basketball? We can play with a basketball. How about matches? And matches come big and small. Uh-oh, sorry, Sparky. Matches come big and they come small and we do not want to play with these because we can start something on fire and make a big fire. We don't want to play with these. 
Is this a toy? Yes. Is this a toy we want to play with? No, do we want to plug it in? Absolutely not. We don't want to play with this if it's plugged in. We don't ever want to touch this unless our parents are with us or an adult. Is a candle a toy? Absolutely not. We do not want to play with candles, again, because they're dangerous and we could start a fire. It's okay if your mom or dad lights one and make sure, make sure that they're there the whole time that it's lit, but we don't, want to, we don't want to play with this if we're a kid. How about a lighter? We don't want to play with lighters ever. The same thing as matches. We could start a really big fire with this and hurt people, right? All right. Thanks, Sparky, for all your help. Um, the, next, the last thing I want to talk about is smoke detectors. And we should all have smoke detectors in our home. Um, so if you're at home right now, ask your mom or dad or look for it yourself. See where are the smoke detectors. Usually they're up on the ceiling. And this lets you know when there's smoke in your house. And if there's smoke in your house, that means that there could be a fire somewhere. Sometimes it goes off if your parents are cooking and they make a little smoke. But always take it seriously and always find a way out if you hear the smoke detector. So if you're sleeping at night and your smoke detector goes off, you want to make sure that if you hear the sound, you wake up, get out of bed, and get out of your house. You never want to hide ever. You don't want to hide under your bed. You don't want to hide in your closet. You don't want to hide in your bathroom. You want to make sure that you get outside. And also, too, if you're home right now with your parents or your, whoever you live with, you should make sure that you have a meeting place so that when you do hear the sound or when there is a fire, that you have a meeting place. So a meeting place should be something that is always there. Could a meeting place be a car? No. A meeting place cannot be a car because a car moves. So if the car is not there that day, right? If the car is not there that day, then you don't have a meeting place. Could a meeting place be a mailbox? Yes, if the mailbox is not attached to your home, a mailbox could be a meeting place. How about a tree? A meeting place could definitely be a tree because it's not going anywhere. So remember to have a meeting spot and always have two ways out of your house. And um, yeah, listen for the sound. And if you hear that sound, make sure to get out of your house to be safe. So that's all I have for you today. I hope. Uh, that you enjoyed our presentation. And remember, be safe and serve up that fire safety in the fire kitchen or in the kitchen and stay away from hot things. Thanks, Sparky. Hi there, I'm Battalion Chief Campanella with the fire department. And today we're gonna do a little competition amongst our firefighters to see who can put on all their gear the fastest. We have to be very timely when we put this on to save people and property. So this is a drill we actually do once or twice a year to improve skills on putting on all this equipment. Right now I have Firefighter Stevanovic, Firefighter Pfeffer, and Firefighter Ritaka. These guys are going to put all their stuff on and get timed. So whenever you guys are ready, do we have a stopwatch? Okay, let's go. Till the first breath. 
have this taken out of the uh, fresh air bottles that we have. Firefighter attack, did you take a breath? Okay, cool. Firefighter attack uh, wins. Now let's see who loses. Who's buying lunch today? It's gonna be down to the wire. Down to the wire. Here we go. Is your hood on? Is your hood on? All right, well, by technicality, firefighter Stevanovic is buying lunch today. He didn't have his hood on. Nice job, you got lucky. Let's give thumbs up to the kids. All right. 